Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, you know, I had never, I've never been so proud to be Ukrainian as these days, when we showed the whole world that we can stand against Putin and against the biggest country in the world that has been threatening everybody with nuclear weapons. I know we are paying a very high price for that. Every day you come to know that somebody that you know died. Those people are heroes and their names would never ever be forgotten. And I know their names would not be forgotten by the rest of the world because we are now protecting the democracy in the world. We're standing against the army of orcs, not just to protect our country, but to protect the world and democracy. And first of all, I would like to thank the administration of Joe Biden for supporting us with the arms. But to be honest, I'm not going to be diplomatic. And first of all, I would like to say people here on the streets coming out, writing your senators, writing your Congress people, and telling them what needs to be done because this is not enough. That's not what we've been promised when we gave up our nukes. But in the 90s, we, told, we were told we will have this protection of our sovereignty. When we gave up more nuclear weapons than, you, than the Great Britain and China has combined. And now we have to demand this support for us. We have to be grateful, but we have to demand more jets because those are, that will be protecting our kids by being bombed by the Russian soldiers. We have to demand sanctions. We've been promised SWIFT. They switched off SWIFT for seven banks out of 300. We need to switch it for everybody. We need secondary sanctions on banks so that no bank in the world can work with the Russian bank or they will be sanctioned too. So I'm asking everyone who stands here, please write your senators, please write your Congress people right here to the administration and demand these strong sanctions. I understand nobody wants to pay extra 50 cents for a gallon of gas. Well, we have children dying every day because they have money to put into their army. I think we can pay more here for the gas, not to allow children to die on the streets. We need a total embargo and we need to demand this from the United States and from the European Union. It's not about politics and economy anymore. It's about lives. And it's about a threat to Europe because Putin has already been bullying everybody about the nuclear stations in Ukraine, about his nuclear weapons. Well, unfortunately, we Ukrainians know who Putin is and you cannot negotiate him. He is a psycho and he never keeps his word. So we now have to ask the international community to punch him, to do the sanctions, to send us the jet, to send us the air defense system that can protect us from missiles coming from Chernobyl, where they put their grads, their Iskanders, and we cannot do anything to fight them back. Because if we do, then it's going to be the world's next nuclear disaster. So I'm very grateful for everybody who keeps coming here because only we people can push the politicians to actions. And only when they op open their polls and see that 74% of Americans support the no-fly zone, I understand that they have to listen to their voters if they don't want to listen to us. People want to protect children and women and we have to ask for that. So I'm very grateful. Please pray for our army. Please pray for every person today in Ukraine because they're all army. You know, a lot of my friends now, but when I see them mixing Molotov cocktails, and the, I, I could not even imagine that the police forces would be teaching Ukrainians how to make Molotov cocktails. You know, this is something unbelievable. But that's what's happening right now in my country, in your country. And we have to be supportive here as much as we can. We have to come thousands here. We have to write thousands of letters to them to make them move. Thank you so much and Slava Ukraini!